Hello everyone out there in Rumble X and YouTube land. Welcome back to Diego Knows. I of course am Diego and today we are going to talk about a uh, chick flick for guys called Swingers. <clears throat> now Swingers is, is, is one of my favorite movies. Okay, it's, it's in my top 10. It's up there. It's really good. Uh, what, what really makes this movie special from other guy movies okay is there's no action in this movie there's no um there's no explosions okay uh it's, it's there's no fighting okay it's not a military drama okay that kind of thing there's no criminal to chase nothing like that okay uh what makes this movie so special is this movie deals with relationships okay it deals with men and women hooking up okay it deals with the uh, the emotional uh turmoil uh, that it puts people through, but in, uh, now all chick flicks do this, but they always do it from the point of view of the girl, from the woman. It's always her point of view, who she attracted to, who she not attracted to. You know, how does that guy make her feel? How does that guy make her feel? How does you know, you know, what does she want? You know, she's discovering herself. You know, all that kind of bullshit. You know, <laughs> uh, they, they always do that. Okay, the emotional turmoil, the drama. The chase, you know, some motherfuckers always running after somebody uh, in the third act. Okay, um, all these rom coms and all these other chick flicks too, or just romance movies in general, they all deal with that. They all deal with the, the woman's point of view. What's going on with the woman? Because if the woman doesn't feel in it, then they ain't, it ain't there. Get the fuck out of here with that noise, all right? Uh, so it's very one sided. Now, women love this stuff, they love watching dramas, you know, where people manipulate people and people are cheating on each other, where, you know, and, and how they're covering it up, you know, and the guilt and the shame, and then, uh, you know, and then the, 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 the relentless passion and all that kind of crap. Women love that shit, okay? Men, oh, not so much. Okay, if you were to make a guy movie, if you were to make a romance movie, a rom-com movie from a guy's point of view, what do you get? You get the shit that you see. You get the beta male simp trying to win over the hot girl, and by the end of the movie, after he's fucking made a total fool of himself, okay, he finally gets the girl at the end, okay? And that, that's playing by girl rules. That's playing by, by rom-com rules, okay? Which, which were created for women, okay? They weren't created for men. Okay, that's why you've got so many movies that are failing right now, is they try to use what the, the formula that works on men, okay, that they get rid of the guy, put a girl there, but use the same formula, and and, 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 and Hollywood's confused as to why nobody's watching this shit. Okay, nobody wants to watch a, a fucking 110 pound girl beat the shit out of guys that are like, you know, six foot four and 230 pounds. Nobody wants to watch that. You know what, because it's stupid. It's stupid. Okay? <laughs> So what do you think? Guys don't want to watch a guy who's athletic and six foot four and acting like a fucking pussy boy around a fucking average looking uh, boss bitch. Okay? That's not realistic. Nobody wants to fucking see that. Girls don't want to see that. Guys don't want to see that. Because it's not realistic. Okay? And I'm not saying there's not weak men. Of course there's weak men out there. But there's also weak women out there. And you never see them in the chick flick. Ever. You know? So it's like, this is, this is bullshit. Now, Swingers, for me, is an exception to this rule because Swingers actually deals with relationships. And that's why I think a lot of women will get a lot out of watching this review. It's because if you want to know what men are feeling emotionally, because you're always talking about that shit, you know, I know most of you don't care. But for those of you that actually care about the guys you're with, okay, if you want to know what, what, what sort of emotional traumas they have to go through or what kind of uh, trials they have to uh, overcome, just to go out with a girl, okay? Now maybe your guy's high value and doesn't go through that much, okay? But if your guy isn't, you know, he's probably gone through a lot to get to you or something, okay? Uh, but no one ever talks about that. It's always about what the woman goes through. It's never about what the guy goes through. The emotional uh, turmoil that men have to go through in dating, okay? Because it's there. They don't make movies about it very often. This movie's an exception, okay? But it, it's out there. It's definitely out there, okay? And, um, you know, it, it sets apart this, this illusion that nobody cares. Well, maybe most people don't care, you know, but let me tell you, uh, women love talking about relationships. Y'all love talking to each other about your husbands, your boyfriends, and who you're fucking and who you're cheating on. You know, like, y'all love talking to each other about that shit, all right? And so movies cater to that. That's why that's what you see in your stupid ass shows like Bridgerton and Sex in the City, which I've reviewed every episode of, by the way. It's on this channel, okay? And um, you know, that's what you do. You talk about that stuff. You talk about that shit. Guys don't talk about that shit. 
Yeah, fucked her. That's it. That's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> what else? We, what else? What else? The guy want to know, huh? How does she like her pancakes in the morning? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Pretty much it, yeah. I fucked her. That's it. There's, there's none of this fucking shit. But oh, I love the way the moonlight goes on his nose when he's sleeping. Huh? You know, it went into this shit. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but uh, just like you, ladies, okay, men, we do fall in love too. We do. I've been in love. Okay, I know what it's like. I know what it's like that the butterflies. I know what it's like the fucking you know feel like your heart's gonna explode out of your chest. You know, with so much you know passion. You know, and virility. I, I get it. I've been there too. Okay? And we chase those moments, okay? And we want to see those moments in these in these movies, in these rom coms, these these chick flicks. You want to see those moments because you because those moments feel good. You want to relive it a little bit. All right. Fantasize that you're with the whoever the fuck uh the, the fucking male fucking uh, lead guy is this fucking week. It changes every week. Well who is it now? Who's the hot guy right now? Like Glenn Powell? Okay, and who wasn't last year? Okay, you know, it's always changing. It's always fucking changing. I remember when Gerard Butler was the hot shit. Now what's he fucking doing? Okay, yeah, he's giving $10 blowjobs on Hollywood Boulevard. Okay, I mean, these, these things are always fucking changing. Like, there's always some new hot guy. He shows up, makes a few movies. The women cream all over him. He gets a great fucking paycheck. And then next thing you know, his next three movies bomb in a row. And he's fucking out there uh, asking you if you want to supersize it or not. Okay, at the fucking uh, Taco Bell. Okay, so I mean that, that's what happens. All right, um, but um, in these movies here, okay, in this particular movie, Swingers, what they're dealing with, we're dealing with the emotional value, the emotional value uh, uh, of being in a relationship from a man's point of view, and that's the big difference from a man's point of view. So, ladies, if you really want to know what it's, what we go through, this movie's a pretty good indicator. Okay, it, it shows you. Maybe you don't give a shit. I don't know. Okay. But guys can definitely relate to this because we never get to see movies like this. When was the last time you saw a movie that dealt with relationships from a man's point of view? You don't see them. That's why I invented this, this category, okay? Chick flicks for guys. I've already done this, okay? I reviewed Boomerang, which is mostly a girl movie. It's not really for guys, but it's fun. It's Eddie Murphy, okay? He's dealing with heartbreak. He's a high-value man who's dealing with heartbreak, okay? I know. It happens, right? Okay? Ridiculous a lot, but it was entertaining. It's funny. It's fucking Eddie Murphy. He's a genius, all right? I also reviewed um, <clears throat> Officer and a Gentleman, okay? That was a romance, complete straight romance, not, not rom-com, romance from a guy's point of view, okay? That was a great movie, by the way. I was in the military myself. I watched my, I reviewed that movie. Watch it on here if you want, okay? I had a lot to say about that, you know? Uh, just from my own experiences, uh, you know, being in love in the military, it's, it's, it's different. It's different from being in love in this fucking civilian world, all right? Big fucking difference, all right? <clears throat> and, uh, High Fidelity, okay, High Fidelity is the one that got this thing going, okay, because I'm from Chicago, and I'm from that neighborhood, Wicker Park, Bucktown, where that movie was filmed, I used to be a big John Cusack fan, I'm not anymore, okay, because yeah, I think he's just a, a, another libtard piece of crap, you know, pro-Biden motherfucker, uh, but, um, you know, uh, I, I understand the ups and downs, okay, now maybe John Cusack's a bad example, because he tends to be a soy boy in all of his movies, he's beta male, always has been, he's built a career being a beta male guy, okay, uh, very uh, non-offensive, you know, very safe, you know, uh, you know, not, not the kind of guy who's just going to grab you and plant a kiss on you. He's more like the guy that's going to like ask for your permission and shit before he even touches you. That kind of guy, you know, um, uh, he's made a career doing that. Okay. But, the, but he goes through a lot of relationship problems in that movie. And so that's why I talked about that because, you know, I'm from that neighborhood and I've been through the same shit. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Okay. And this movie is one of those. Okay. Swingers is definitely one of those. All right. We're going to deal with emotional um, the emotional damage that's done to men uh, from these relationships and also a lot of it just like the insecurity just dealing with man trying to fucking get his balls back or, or trying to find his balls if he never fucking had them you know I think that's a big problem uh, in our country in the western world is men aren't being men anymore because they have no fucking role models you're not allowed to have them. When I was a kid, when I was growing up, man, I had I had Christopher Reeve Superman. I had fucking Rambo. I had Terminator. Okay, I had, I had fucking Die Hard. Okay, I mean, I had role models, okay, that I could look up to and be like, I want to be like him when I grow up. Okay, here's a guy. I want to be strong like him. You know, I want to be I want to be a badass like, like John Rambo. Okay, I want to be a good fighter like Rocky Balboa. You know, I, I want to go out in the jungle and kill a fucking predator like fucking Schwarzenegger. I mean, we had role models, okay? We had we had examples of men that we wanted to be like, 
okay, uh, like, like Steven Seagal, okay, uh, you know, we had these role models. It was a positive thing. These role models weren't there to, to fucking be misogynist or to fucking, you know, talk down to women or beat women up or any of that shit. They were there to fucking be good guys. You can be tough, you can be good, and you can be cool at the same time. Okay, that's what that's what boys were looking up to. Because a lot of us in my generation, we're like the first generation being raised by single moms and shit, you know? I know it sounds weird. Now it's like fucking almost, it's like most kids now, okay? But back then, it wasn't quite as mainstay as it is today. You know, I mean, it, I mean, it was it was becoming mainstay, definitely, you know, uh, but it wasn't the way it is today where it's just like nobody even blinks an eye. Like when I was growing up in the 80s, man, you're, you're raised by a single mom. It's like, oh, man, that sucks. Now it's like, so what? Everyone is, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a big deal. OK, um, but we had male role models. OK, we had we had these ideas of masculinity that as a boy I wanted to achieve when I became older. And we don't have that anymore. OK. A lot of us guys that were raised this way in single parent households, by that I mean single moms, um, you know, we're looking for role models. We're looking for an example, okay, for something that sparks our interest. They can tell, yeah, I want to be like him. I want to be like him. You know, we need that. And, and you know, that's my generation had that. This generation doesn't. I mean, who, who the fuck does any guy want to be like? What, Timothy Chalamet? Honestly, okay, the only reason Timothy Chalamet gets laid is because he's a famous, well paid movie star. Okay, Timothy Chalamet could be working at your fucking Starbucks and nobody's gonna fucking look at him. Okay, so let's get the fuck out of here. All right, with, with that bullshit. Okay, uh, the things that women find sexy are not the same things that men find sexy. I don't give two fucking shits how much money you have or how famous you are. Okay, if you're ugly, you're fucking ugly. And I'm not gonna fuck you. Okay, like Lizzo. I don't give a shit. She's famous, she's talented. Okay, she's super fucking wealthy. Okay, I'm never gonna fuck Lizzo because she's fucking fat and ugly. Okay. But now you get a guy like a fucking, uh, I don't know, like a, like a Harry Styles or some shit, okay? Well, let's face it, if he was out in the real world, you put Harry Styles around a bunch of normal guys and we're going to fucking beat the shit out of that fucking pussy, okay? Okay, but you give him a fucking dress, okay? And give him a fucking uh, $10 million record contract, okay? Now all of a sudden, oh, we're going to find him hot. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, it's a total, total big fucking difference right there, all right? Big fucking difference. Anyway, so let's talk about swingers here, okay? This movie deals with those things, okay? It deals with uh, how we feel about each other, okay? How men relate to each other when it comes to dating, the things that we talk about, the things that we obsess about, the things that we make fun of, okay? Uh, the things that we're insecure about and the things that we feel very confident about, okay? All that's in here. I mean, ladies, if you want to crack the mind of a guy who's dating, okay, an average straight guy who's out there dating, you know? This is it. You're going to find out though, that we're not fucking, you know, we're not sexual assaulters, okay? We're not like these these people that you keep seeing in movies, okay? We're not obsessed with falling in love either, okay? But when we're in love, we know it, you know, and we, we want to keep that relationship, okay? Um, you know, we want to be the man. We want to be the provider. We want those things, okay? But we're, we're living in a world today that's just like, it, it's turned its back on us. It really has. I mean, not me. I mean, I'm talking about the younger generation. You know, there's just no role models, okay? Uh, the women are all taught to be boss bitches and to be to treat men like shit, okay? And uh, and how are men gonna advance in that too? They're not, they're, they're gonna contract. They're gonna form their own groups and shit and stuff like that, you know? They're gonna jump out of the dating pool. And it's sad, it's sad. I don't feel my generation, you know? I've had my fun. I'm worried about the next generation, you know? Uh, because let me tell you something, I got a little boy, you know, and I gotta teach him how to deal with all this shit that's going on today. It's only gonna get worse, okay? I mean, like in my generation, our generation, you actually talked to people, you actually met them in person. That's how you fucking met. There was no fucking cell phone here. There was no fucking app. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> we did it the old fashioned way. You know, you wanna know how much money he has? How tall he is? You fucking meet him. You don't fucking read, try to read the profile. Like, get the fuck out of here. Come on, you talk to them. All right, anyway, so let's talk about this movie, Swingers, all right? I love this movie very much. Now, Swingers came out in 1996. The first time I saw this movie, I didn't see it when it first came out. I was in the, I was in the Marines, actually, uh, that year. That's when I joined. Uh, I think I, I came home to visit on vacation in 1997 or 98 or something. And my little brother had this movie. It was already on, uh, I think it was on, on DVD by then, you know? And DVDs were new, by the way, in the late 90s. DVDs were new, yeah, I know. 
I know, right? We were still, we still had VHSs back in the 90s, okay? But DVDs were new, and I think my, my br little brother had it. He was in high school. And so I watched it, just, just for shits and giggles. Okay, what's this movie about? Okay, I watched it, and I'm telling you, I fell in love. The movie was great. The movie was incredible. Now, the, just to let you know about the late 90s, the Miramax. Okay, Miramax uh, made this movie. Okay, yes, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, that guy. We all know about how he made his starlets uh, stars. Okay, yeah. He made them stars, all right, by making making them stars, all right? Uh, all of them, okay? I don't give a shit what Angelina Jolie says or Jennifer Lawrence. We all know he banged all of them, okay? Uh, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, Rose McGowan, okay? He banged them all. If there was a hot girl and she was in a Miramax movie, Harvey Weinstein fucked her, okay? <laughs> Uma Thurman, yeah, all of them. I know, I know, man. I know. But, but it's true. It's true. You know, and, and, and people let it happen. People were getting, because he was giving them, he was making them into movie stars. These, his movies were winning Academy Awards. Okay? Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Kevin Smith, they all owe their careers. Quentin Tarantino, they all owe their careers to Harvey Weinstein. Okay? He made all of them into a thing. Okay? They wouldn't be what they are today if it wasn't for them, for, for Harvey Weinstein. Okay? Everyone forgets that part. You know? But yeah, uh, the, the trade-off to that is yeah, he sexually assaulted a lot of the, a lot of the women, a lot of the starlets. Ashley Judd, come on, and how many of them were, were, were I mean, forced? I don't think he forced any of them. Honestly, I think they gave it up. I think they gave it up uh, because they wanted to be stars, because they wanted to be famous. Okay, because this was their opportunity. They wanted that role. They wanted the role. You know. Uh, they don't want. To, they don't want their scenes cut. They they, they want to tell you know they all want to be movie stars. They all think they're all that. You know, you get Harvey Weinstein on your side. He's going to promote the hell out of you. The whole world's going to find out who you are. They're going to see how beautiful you are and stuff. And they're, you're going to cast another movie. It's not just his. That's how it works. You know, the more movies you make, one of them's going to be a hit. Once once that one becomes a hit, boom! Now you're on fucking all the magazine covers and shit. You know, doing all the talk shows. You see what I mean? That's how it works. Okay, and and that's what they wanted, and so they gave it up. Okay, and everybody knew about it. Don't tell me Brad Pitt didn't know about it. Of course he did. Tell me Ben Affleck didn't know about it. Of course he did. Okay, they all knew about it. They just turned their eye because they didn't want to lose what they had. Okay? These people that are so great at being, you know, heroes on screen. You know, the Angelina Jolies, the feminists of the world. You know, the Gwyneth Paltrow's of the world. Okay? The Ashley Judd's of the world. You know, the boss bitches. You know, that are role models for women. They all fucking knew what Harvey was doing because he did it to them. And they all fucking kept their mouths shut and let him keep doing it. Keep doing it. Because they didn't want to lose their careers. They didn't want to take that hit. Yeah, how's that for fucking feminism? Anyway. Uh, Harvey Weinstein, obviously, the owner of Miramax. A game of his brother, Bob Weinstein. I mean, I know the company's done now. Okay, uh, but anyway, they produced this movie, okay, and they were very big in the 90s, in the, the mid-90s, because they were making the movies that nobody else was making. Okay, like I said, they make Pulp Fiction, uh, they made all the Kevin Smith movies, you know, uh, Clerks, they, they distributed Clerks, they didn't make it, they distributed it, they bought the rights to it, you know, they made Chasing Amy, they made uh, Mall Rats, okay, Clerks 2, all that was Miramax, okay, uh, Good Will Hunting, Miramax, okay, uh, look, look what that did for Robin Williams, I mean, that, that was a godsend for, for Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and Robin Williams, you know. Uh, Goodwill Hunting was okay, so they were doing those type of movies, okay, and they did this movie Swingers, okay. Um, they didn't make this movie, but they bought it. They bought it from John Favreau, okay, because uh, this movie was made for like a 200, 250 million, 200 or two hundred fifty thousand dollar budget. It was very low budget, very low budget, okay. Um, it came out in nineteen ninety six, okay. The director of this movie, his name is Doug Lyman. Now, Doug Lyman actually uh, worked with John Favreau to come up with the money. For this movie that two hundred thousand dollars okay doug lyman was the guy who came up with that money okay uh he made he, made, he got most of it from his dad <laughs> now doug lyman wanted to be a director okay he wanted but nobody would give him a job he wanted to be a director um but luckily he came from a wealthy family so he asked his dad for some money okay to make this movie okay john favreau who want who wrote the script he wrote he wrote it okay based on his own experiences from uh, moving from Chicago to fucking to LA <laughs> to become an actor, <laughs> okay? Uh, that's why he wrote the script, okay? And uh, he, he hooked up with Doug Lyman. Doug Lyman got the money from his dad, 
But uh, the the um, the one stipulation that he told John Favreau was that yeah, I'll get you, I'll get the two hundred thousand dollars we need, but uh, I'm going to direct the movie. So of course, John Favreau had no choice. Now, obviously, we all know how how great John Favreau is as a director. Right? He directed Iron Man, Iron Man Two, Elf. Okay, he's directed a lot of stuff. Okay, very. Uh, he did the um, the Jungle Book remake. Okay, I mean he's done a lot. He did the Lion King remake for Disney. Okay, so he's done a lot. He's done a lot of stuff. He started. He kickstarted the Marvel Universe, Cinematic Universe. All right. Uh, but Doug Liman, uh, this was his first movie he ever directed. Uh, but since then, he's done some other stuff. You've probably seen. He did the Born Identity once again, Matt Damon. Right, that was in two thousand two. He did Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I get once again. There's Brad Pitt, and Angelina Jolie. That that's the movie where uh, Brad Pitt uh, was having an affair with Angelina Jolie while he was married to uh, Jennifer Aniston. Okay, that was the movie. Okay, that came out in 2005. Uh, Doug Liman directed that. He directed Jumper in 2008. That's a Samuel L. Jackson and um, Hayden Christensen, you know, you know, uh, fucking Anakin Skywalker from the, the, the prequels. Okay, yeah, that was, that was, that was a stupid uh, teleportation sci-fi movie. Okay, Edge of Tomorrow, which I heard is very good. I've never seen it. It's the one with, um, uh, with what's, her, what's his name? Uh, Tom Cruise is in that one. And um, and Emily Blunt, yeah, Edge of Tomorrow, that was in 2014. He directed that. Uh, he also directed this year uh, the fucking that crappy Roadhouse movie that came out on Netflix this year, or was it Amazon Prime? I think it was Amazon. I, I saw it. it's crap. It's crap. Okay, it, it's it's just woke, woke fucking. It, it's it's the Patrick Swayze movie, but woke. They made it woke. That's all. Okay, instead of fucking being a, a you know the man with no name. You know, the quiet, you know, the silent, silent, you know, type, you know, badass is always looking around, observing, you know, man, a few words, you know, like Dalton, you know, uh, Patrick Swayze from Roadhouse, Dalton, you know, he's just like the, like the gunslinger just walks in there, he's real quiet, looks around and slowly starts taking over and has all these fucking catchphrases, okay? Okay, instead of that shit, we got some fucking MMA fighter who, who actually knows how to kill people very easily with his bare hands, but he talks, you know, like, hey... You know, hey, by the way, is there a hospital around here? Because, you know, uh, you, you might need one, you know? And yeah, yeah, that's right. That was it right there. That was the move uh, that, that, that I killed him in. That's right, that I murdered him in. Yep. Uh, yeah, you got me on that. Yeah, absolutely. Like that. That's the Jake Gyllenhaal fucking Dalton. Are you out of your fucking mind? Dude, that guy should be in fucking bros, man. Not in fucking Roadhouse remake. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, he directed that. So that should tell you something about his directing skills. But this movie, I mean, what the fuck? I think they did a great job directing. You know, no one really cares. Uh, a lot of it, and they even referenced it in the movie. A lot of the movie, the direction of the movie was was just you know homages to other movies. You know, there's a scene in the movie where they homage uh, Reservoir Dogs. Okay, you know, the, the whole circular camera, you know, at the, at the poker table, you know, where every character you know has something to say, and then the, the slow mo walk, you know. You know, the Mel I call it the Melrose Place walk where it was in a fucking line on it in slow-mo, you know? <laughs> where in real life, you're trying to walk down the sidewalk and they're all walking there. Get the fuck out of my way, you asshole. You know, like I'm taking up a whole fucking sidewalk for yourself. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so that kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> so that's in there. Okay, it's so like I said, the movie cost $250,000. Uh, uh, they sold it to Miramax. Uh, I guess they didn't premiere it at Sundance, so they wanted to. They didn't think it was, it was artsy enough. Okay, but they managed to have like a, a screening for it in LA, and someone uh, showed a copy of it to, to Weinstein, to, Bob, to Harvey Weinstein. He bought it for $5.5 million. Once he bought it, then it got a big dis distribution, okay? Okay, now like I said before, the movie was written by John Favreau, okay? He, he also was the star of this movie. He plays a character named Mike Peters. Okay, Mike Peters. Now, John Favreau, you know, this guy's got the rugged look, okay? He's not classically handsome or anything like that. You know, he doesn't have the chisel features. He's not that tall. Okay. Um, he's just an average guy. He's an average guy. And this is a story about an average guy. Just your, your, your typical. That's why he relates to so many men. That's why men love this movie so much. It's because they, we can see ourselves in Mike Peters. Okay. Even though we might not be as, um, as depressed or as emotionally insecure as he is. Okay. But we've done the things that he's done in this movie. Okay. We've all had our weak moments. Okay, where well, we've done some stupid stuff based on our fears and our insecurities. Okay, we've all done that. And and Mike Peters epitomizes that. He epitomizes that. We understand this guy. Okay, and we feel bad for him. You know, but we've all been in a funk. We've all we've all been in a depression over a breakup. Okay, every guy I know has gone through that. All right, and, and, and he epitomizes what we're like when we're going through that. Only he takes it one step further. He actually does things 
that your typical guy wouldn't do okay but we understand why he did it okay so we like we've all thought about doing these things okay but he actually does it okay makes a fool of himself absolutely but you know we can relate to him we know what it's like to be mike peters okay we've all been mike peters at some point in our lives unfortunately some of us are, are i've always been mike peters and always will be okay but we, we can understand this guy we've all done it we've all we know what it's like Okay, to, to hang out with your guy friends and have all the hot girls hitting on your guy friend and no no one's hitting on you. We've all know what that's like, okay? <laughs> we all know it's like when you try to, to make a girl smile with something funny and it ends up nobody's smiling, they're just looking at you like like that. We have all been there. Okay. This this movie epitomizes that, okay? Your typical guy. So this is this is one of the reasons why I hate it. When these women talk about how men are all assholes and men are all selfish and men only care about themselves and men are this and that, and that you know, misogyny, you know, and sex to them. And you know, when they hear this shit, you know, you have no idea what guys are going through. You have no fucking idea. You expect us to be so fucking sensitive to all the problems that women have, okay, but you won't give one fucking ounce of empathy to anything that a man has to go through, okay? If you watch this movie, you'll see some of the shit that we go through. Okay, I and mean, it's very real. It's very realistic. Very, very well done. Okay. Anyway, and that's what Mike Peters is. That's that John Favreau's character. Okay, he's the average guy. He's us. He's basically us. Okay. If we were depressed, okay, we do the things, or we've thought about doing the things that he does in this movie. Okay. And luckily, because the script is so good, uh, he pulls it off very well. It's very funny. Yes, we're laughing at the whole movie. Is we're laughing at John Favreau's expense. Okay. And I can understand that. Okay. You've got to have an iron will constitution. To, to know that you're just an average guy and then you write this script where you're going to basically play yourself and everyone in the movie is going to laugh at you and what an idiot you are <laughs> okay <laughs> you know to know that how many how many actors would do that yeah yeah you've got to have an iron constitution can you imagine that can you imagine like brad pitt doing a movie where you know that he wrote himself where all it is 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 you know women making fun of how small his dick is can you imagine that movie I mean, he would never do it. <laughs> it might make a billion dollars, but he would never do it because that would be making fun of him and his image. And he can't have that. He's got another movie to do. No one's going to want to see his next movie if everyone thinks he's just a, a, a little dick fucking pretty boy, over the hill pretty boy. You know, nobody, nobody wants to see that. No one's going to see that movie if that's what they think about him. You see what I mean? So his ego would never allow that movie to happen, no matter how good it is. Okay, because that that would take a uh, take a hit on his 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 uh, his media personality. Okay. His Q score would go down. Okay, his image would suffer for that. Okay, John Favreau had no image. He was a struggling actor. Okay, the only thing he'd done that I'd seen him in before was Rudy. He was in Rudy. He had a small role in Rudy. And what he played in Rudy, he played a guy who fucking, you know, who, who was going to Notre Dame. Okay, and he was trying to get laid and he couldn't. <laughs> and so he asked, he asked Sean Astin to help him get laid. Sean Astin, yeah. Sam from fucking uh, uh, The Lord of the Rings. Yeah fucking uh the leader of the fucking goonies okay yeah yeah that guy okay sean astin yeah uh yeah he played a small role in that but vince vaughn was in that and he played one of the football players okay he played like one of the one of the, the popular guys you know so uh that's actually where he met that's where john favreau met uh vince vaughn was in the movie rudy they already knew each other okay so that helped out a lot when they were casting the movie okay because uh john favreau already knew uh vince vaughn okay so anyway, speaking of vince vaughn he plays the character named trent walker now vince vaughn has pro this is a star making vehicle for him he's he, he stole every scene he was in okay his character we all know this guy he's the exact opposite of mike peters okay uh vince vaughn his character trent suffers from high self-esteem okay uh no things don't always go his way but he takes everything with a grain of salt okay he doesn't exactly you know let things bother him okay uh he's very he's very flamboyant okay he's very extroverted he's always talking never shuts up which is a little bit annoying because he's got that, that squeaky voice like hey you know he talks like that he's got that squeaky nasally voice okay but he never shuts up he's always talking okay he's full of self-confidence he's well dressed he's a handsome guy very intelligent he knows he's got the gift of gab he knows how to talk to girls okay he knows how to talk to people okay he doesn't let things bother him you know he doesn't stay depressed he never he's never depressed he gets angry he gets frustrated okay but he doesn't like he doesn't never wallows in self-pity okay and you need guys like that in your life okay because that that's the kind of guys that i used to look up to when i was a kid because I, I was an emo kid like mike peters all right and i wanted to see what what, what is that secret that men have the, the ones that don't let things get to them 
Like, how do they stay positive all the time? Despite, you know, the whole world's falling down around them. How do they stay positive, okay? But you got to look for guys like that and learn from guys like that. And Trent's character is that guy, okay? Every guy needs a guy like that in their lives, okay? I, I've had plenty of guys like that in my life, thank God. I like to think that I'm one of those guys as well because I really don't let things bother me either anymore like I did when I was young, okay? Where I fucking I would get emotional over a lot of stupid ass shit now. That shit doesn't even fucking matter to me. I don't even think about it, okay? But it was it was watching movies like this and watching characters like Trent that, that were the, the inspiration for me to start changing my behavior, start changing my disposition, you know, and looking at life in, in, in a more positive way. Okay, because even though a lot of things Trent does is stupid, it really is. Okay, he takes chances. He's brave. He's got courage. Okay, he's got confidence. Okay, and that's all you really need. And he definitely has that. Okay, and when you're depressed and, and, and full of uh, self pity, you need a guy with confidence around so some of that can rub off on you. And that's why his character is so integral. Okay, he's gonna make the best jokes. His stories when he's telling the story to the girls, he's also seducing us too. Cause like, cause the stories are so fucking. The way he tells the story is so fucking entertaining that you can't help but fucking be focused on him. The camera loves him in this movie. Okay, and we need guys like that. It's guys like him. This this whole movie is character driven. It's all about the characters. That that's what your investment in. It's not the settings. It's not the budget. Okay, there, there's no budget for this movie. Okay, it's all about the characters. It's guys talking. That's all it is. This whole movie is just guys talking in different locations. But that's all that's all they can afford. That's all they can afford to do in this movie. Okay, so so the fucking dialogue had better be on point. It better not be boring, and it's not. It's not boring at all. Okay, so thank God for characters like 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 Trent. Okay, Trent Walker in this movie. All right, another character, Ron Livingston. And you've probably seen him before. This is his first movie as well. Ron Livingston uh, was friends with in real life. He was friends with uh, John Favreau. They they were actually roommates in real life in Chicago, where they're from, where I'm from too. Okay, and they used to work together at this club that I've been to many times in Chicago called Improv Olympic. It's on Halstead Street, and I used to take girls there on dates all the time. Yeah. Improv Olympic, I've taken several girls on dates there. And basically you walk in there at the Improv Olympic and you've got these two different teams, okay? And they're both competing with each other to, to do the best, the funniest skits, okay? And as the audience member, you kind of vote, okay, on which team did it better, okay? It's very entertaining, very fun, okay? But that's where they're from. They were working there and then they decided to fucking go to LA and try to make it as actors, you know, and that kind of thing, okay? So that, that's how that's how Ron Livingston got in there. You've seen him since then. This is the first thing he's done. I know he's on a show right now. Uh, I think there, I saw a commercial for it on, um, on Amazon Prime or Netflix. I don't fucking know. Or he plays some fucking guy or I don't know. But uh, his, big, his big thing was uh, back in like around 20, 20 30 years ago, okay? Uh, after this movie came out is when his career really started picking up. Okay, he started playing characters in movies. You remember him from Office Space? Okay, that, that movie made him very famous, okay? Uh, it's another Miramax movie, okay? Ron Livingston was the main character in that in Office Space. You might remember him as Jack Berger from uh, Sex and the City. <laughs> I remember him from that. <laughs> oh, my God. You want to talk about a character that fucking hit too close to home? Too close to home. That character, Jack Berger. Oh, my God. I, when I, 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 biggest complaint I had about Sex and the City is the men uh, portrayed on that show were not realistic. Uh, when, I, when I saw Jack Berger's character, I, I got scared because here was a guy that was actually acting like a guy. I know because he was acting like me, you know, and then when, when Carrie would yell at him for, for saying something, I was like, why are you yelling at him for? That's exactly what I would have said. You, you, know, you know what I mean? That's, that's what I would have done. You know, I never felt like that with any of the male characters on the show until Jack Berger's character. So, yeah, I know. Yeah. Anyway, that's Ron Livingston. OK, last year he was on The Flash. Yeah, he played Ezra Miller's dad. Ezra Miller's dad in the Flash movie, the movie that nobody saw. Okay, uh, we also got Alex Desert here. He plays this black guy named um, Charles. Alex Desert. Okay, speaking of the Flash, uh, uh, Alex Desert was in on the TV show The Flash <laughs> from 1990. Yes, he played he played Julio Mendez on that show. <laughs> I know because I watched it. Uh, I was in high school at the time. I watched it. Okay, the Flash TV show. Yeah, John Wesley Shipp, who's a friend of mine by the way. I actually know him. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, Julio, yeah, Char yeah, Alex Desert plays Charles, another struggling actor uh, in this movie, and you might remember him from some stupid ass Fox show called The Heights, which was like a ripoff of 90210 and Melrose Place. 
How do you talk to an angel? Yeah, yeah, I think it lasted like one season. Yeah, they they're all about that back in the 90s. Okay, and uh, I think he was on some show with Ted Danson, some sitcom with Ted Danson, but I never fucking watched it. And he had a small role in High Fidelity, another movie that I reviewed, like I said before. He had a small role in that movie too, okay? Anyway, that's Alex Desert. Heather Graham's in this movie. She was an up-and-coming star back then. Uh, obviously, everyone remembers her from Boogie Nights. Okay, and then, of course, she was also in the Lost in Space uh, movie <laughs> with William Hurt. <laughs> And Matt LeBlanc. Okay, yeah, he was in that too. <laughs> Gary Oldman. All right. Uh, she did a lot of other stuff. And then she started doing TVs and shit. I think she had, Heather Graham had the world right. She was hot, by the way. I liked her a lot. She was, she was in the Austin Power movie. Uh, one of those. I don't remember which one. Okay. But um, I really liked her a lot. But I think she has the world record. Uh, she did a TV show. It was, it was like a Sex and the City inspired TV show by this single hot girl in her 30s who's dating in L.A. or New York. Who fucking remembers, you know? They're all the same fucking shit. They're all trying to cash in on the Sex and the City market. And it, she did one episode of the show. It premiered, and then they never made another episode. <laughs> it was so bad that it only aired the pilot episode, and it never aired again. They never made any more episodes. <laughs> I cannot think of it, but you probably know. Okay, if you're a big fan of mine, you probably know uh, what this is, what, what show that was. I'll have to look it up. Anyway, Heather Graham's in this. She plays Lorraine. She doesn't show up until the end, okay? And then you got this girl named Brooke Langdon, and she plays Nikki. Nikki. Who the fuck's Nikki? I don't even fucking know, but we'll get to that later. Okay, all right. So I'm going to stop my review right here, but I'll be back shortly to continue my review of Swingers. I thank you very much for watching this long, and I'll see you soon on the next one. Bye.